Hey guys, what's up? Bye, Sack the Tron here from One Half Gazette. Here with the next base identification video. This war is just a little bit in, but as I was going through, I've already seen a lot of great attacks that I think uh, fit very well into a base identification video because they did a good job exploiting the different uh, parts of the base that made it easy to use the given attack strategy. Um, this first one is an attack by the other clan, and um, I am gonna. Uh, show this base just because it's not one of our CWR bases and um, it was a nice attack on it. So let's take a look here. Uh, this is Bob hitting this base and um, I'm going to pause it before you guys see too much so I can talk a little bit about this base, how it's set up. In general, one of the great things about the king when you're doing a suicide hero attack is the king is great at clearing out trash on the outside and tanking. So you'll notice that Bob dropped the king to tank these archer towers uh, for a few loons to get a nice defensive trade there. Two loons on the archer tower makes the pathing easier, gets a point defense down uh, that could would otherwise be up for the attack. And also going to tank for wall breakers and tank for the king, or tank for the queen, I mean. So the king's gonna get a lot of good value here just by dropping him, uh, popping the ability, letting him just clear out this area. Um, it makes it so that there's not the need for, you know, 20, 30 troop space of uh, troops to do the job that he would otherwise be doing because oftentimes on a suicide hero attack uh, the king um, is you know there's not a whole lot of use for him so this is a great way to get some good value uh, basically the overall attack is just exploiting how this base has the four air defenses in central locations uh, tanking the wizard towers pretty good pathing throughout the base um, once you get past this first layer, you got a nice little wall of defenses for the loons to get to. A good freeze value on the Infernos, Wizard Towers, Air Sweepers, and that's pretty much that. I mean, this base is crushed. Let's take a look at the attack. Um, but it basically comes down to uh, the most popular uh, and powerful attack strategy at uh, Town Hall 11 for three starting other Town Hall 11s being the Mass Suicide Hero La Luna attack um, paired with a very good use of the heroes, a good entry, then just great value from the spells and great Laloon pathing through this base. So the king uh, makes his way down, actually cuts back in here, which is even better, continues to tank for a little bit longer even than he otherwise would have. Queen steps up, uh, she's gonna shoot a few buildings, then she'll step up. He's getting a uh, air defense and the enemy queen, two important things, doesn't have to bring a skelly spell that way. Uh, the skelly spells are a little bit unpredictable sometimes and uh, that air defense, of course, helps for La Loon. Here come the haste. I like the wide deployment. You want to start very wide and avoid the loons clumping up, especially at Town Hall 11 on a mass La Loon attack. So everything moving through the base, a good uh, rage where it's needed over some higher HP buildings, wizard towers, uh, the eagle, of course. Then there was a money on the freeze. My only objection is he used the freezes at the same time as the warden's ability. Um, so there really were any uh, defenses shooting during the freezes because everything was pretty much frozen. So the warden's ability could have been used either before or after the freezes. Um, but besides that, crush the base, and even with that um, that one thing that I think could have been improved, still has so many troops up. Uh, right there, Lava Hound split, still has one more that won't, and a huge, um, a, a, a huge party of balloons, just a ton of them left up. Lava Pups, Minions, that's that. Nice one to Bob. Let's move on. Also going to use their attack for a Town Hall 10 3-star. Uh, very nice. Um, we're a little bit... We tend to attack later, so it's not often that only you know six hours into the war we have a uh, a ten v ten. But they actually got one already um, on base number fifteen here, Zach of Blades. This is Fry Black um, attacking this base, and he does a great job identifying a, a, a lack of point defense at a certain point. So um, this base overall, though, good for dragons, just. On the initial look at it um, for a few reasons you have the air defenses out in the corners makes it easy to either use suicide heroes to get them or use um, some hasted loons if it's right in the corner there even if the mortars there you could <coughs> excuse me you can still use um, a haste and go past the mortar into the um, air defense oftentimes people put mortars there to try to screw up the pathing but it's definitely still doable so 
uh, that's one thing. Also, you got the core expos, very central. Uh, Inferno Tower is pretty central, and not a whole lot of high HP buildings. You have some storages towards the back end um, and towards the uh, outer sides, but for the most part, the trash is outside the base. Um, and the, the Queen is central, a lot of good uh, indicators to use the La Loon, some very easily uh, accessible defenses with some hasted loons and with that clone spell. So one main thing I talked about just a minute ago is identifying a lack of point defense, and that's going to be in this area. As soon as these cannons go down, the queen is free to, um, once the wall, wall breakers open up this wall, to step in and get two air defenses. This expo won't reach her for a while, and this cannon can't, these expos can't. Um, the CC, not quite there. So because of that, able to get some great value just from a baby dragon up there to get those two buildings. The queen, uh, who will take damage from one cannon, but look, three giants, I think. Um, was it three giants? or No, just one giant. Um, yeah, really reduced the amount of giants. There was two attacks on this base. The first one used a few more giants, but only needed one because, like I said, right here's the gap in the point defense. Um, the queen just sitting there, the mortar's on her, but it can't really hurt her, so she can step up and take out two free air defenses. So if the base looks like that, you know, think, can I do a nice suicide queen, get some good value, whether it's for a hog attack, a la loon attack, whatever it is, and um, get some very good value for a cheap investment if you can get past that initial um, amount of point defense. Oftentimes there's a lack of point defense within the base, and that's a great way to exploit it. So the king up top, of course, it's a dragon attack. Um, Got to use the heroes on either side for the funnel. And yeah, there's going to be two air defenses left up, but they're not a huge issue because, like I said, they're on the outside of the base. Some loons can easily reach them. The pathing is very nice there. So here come the dragons. Uh, the Lava Hound, a little bit close there, but it finally goes to the king. That way the dragons won't have to worry about it. Um, already sending in some loons just to take out these archer towers um, that are otherwise being tanked by dragons and the king still. Um, so nice rages and um, uses the clone because really you, there's not enough places to use five spells on dragons. So instead um, brings that clone spell in order to turn uh, spell space into more troop space, which is what you want to do often on these attacks. So uh, clones a bunch of loons. That's going to be his main pack that's going to move through the base. Um, with that one Lava Hound tanking, great use of that Lava Hound to send it through the base and uh, basically soak up traps, tank defenses. Then right there, boom, four loons, a haste. That'll definitely get any air defense down if it's direct pathing. Um, ton of dragons left up. One, two, three, four, five. Um, bunch of loons, they'll kind of disappear as the clone spell wears off. Uh, but nice stuff there. Nice one to Fry Black. And we will wrap this attack up uh, as it goes to a three star. So. Let's move on to two Town Hall 9 attacks here. Um, we have oh, all these live attacks going on. i um, not going to show them though. We want to look at some already three star bases, uh, one of which is number 21. Let's go back up. Um, Tom taking on this base and you can use a lot of different strategies for Town Hall 9. I'm not going to pretend like this is the one strategy that would work for this base but it's still good base identification to find one of many that would work. And if you look at this base, it's a good candidate for witches because the the pathing through the core is just perfect for a double jump. You can drop uh, one jump between these two, then one jump over between these two, and basically connect the entire base, all those inner compartments. You can reach both expos because that expo is touching this compartment so the queen boulders can reach it. Um, a bunch of defenses. Now you might think there's not many core wizard towers, which are often a good reason, um, or core bomb towers, which make it um, a, a good witch base because the, the, the kill squad going into the base takes out the splash damage and the witches can take out the point defense very easily. And that's not the case on this base uh, much because the wizard towers and I think, where's the bomb tower? Um, it's not really in the core or near the core of the base, but it's, it's a nice boxy shape and it allows him to, instead of using the healers, use some golems to just sit there. Uh, he comes in from the uh, 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock side right along here um, with the, the double jump starting there. 
uh, but a golem here to tank these two, which is behind, a golem on this mortar to tank those two, which is behind, takes out that mortar with a lunar two, and then uh, it's nice because the golems will retarget after these are down. The kill squad gets these two, the witches get these two. Golem walks down, tanks that, walks down, tanks that. Just a nice progression of those golems. So the golems can be um, almost as effective or more effective than healers. They're definitely more reliable. Um, basically just drop them and as long as the compartment's small enough and the kill squad's going through at the same time, the golems will reroute um, over to the next defense. So a good base to use witches on, mainly for the double jump. If you can see uh, nice tight compartments, meaning your bowlers aren't going to walk, but they can reach the entire base. It's going to guide them through. Um, that's a great place to jump uh, through the base. So could have used maybe hogs even around the base, but I think witches were the best because there's a lot of flanking defenses making it difficult to use hogs because they have to go in kind of a weird U-shape around the base. The witches to clean up the sides is better. So it starts off with the golems on either side, like I said, a nice loon on that mortar up there. And then um, the main force going through the base has the jump. One more golem, king, queen, CC bowlers. Perfect timing. Each uh, little part is going to funnel the part next to it. So the kill squad funnels the witches and the witches funnel the kill squad. Uh, nice mutual uh, beneficial stuff going on there. Uh, and then one golem does go inside the base, but this other golem at the bottom here is just going to start walking along, tanking whatever defense is next. And as soon as that cannon goes down, it'll continue walking. Meanwhile, the kill squad are getting great value. And even the witches up top still doing some good stuff despite that one golem going down, uh, going inside the base. Would have been better, better maybe if the golem did not, but um, the kill squad gets some more tanking that way. The witches still doing work on the outside. I think the golemites at this point, or maybe that golem is still alive behind the town hall. But whatever is there, still tanking, taking that wizard tower now. Meanwhile, here comes the uh, the kill squad, that last jump, such money, laying them all the way to the back of the base. It has witches on both sides. Not every day you see that. Oftentimes, one side will die or something, but both sides has surviving witches and um, a ton of troops in the core of the base. So nice stuff to Tom. And we have one more attack to take a look at here. <clears throat> Okay, uh, base number 29. Did we get some three stars in those? Uh, looks like we got one three star. Iron Lion failed, but all right, cool. Um, 29, I think is what I said. Iceman. This one, this one was a great um, hog attack, and the kill squad got some great value. Basically, if you're going to use the double jump, it's often a good idea to bring a rage to really invest in that kill squad because if you're bringing the troop space, you're bringing the three golems, you're bringing just the, you know, a very heavy kill squad, also going to want to invest the spells and get your money's worth if you're already bringing the troop space. And if you see a base that's kind of spread out like this, it often makes for a, a great value in your funnel. So um, he drops a baby dragon down here to pick up the cannon, just a free cannon right there. Uh, wasn't even a black air bomb or anything. And then is able to get a very nice deep funnel over here, jump between, uh, go to the expo, then jump again. Um, these cord archer towers definitely make it worth it, getting some good defensive value. Then the question is, how many spells do the hogs need? Basically, you want to look for areas where there's multiple defenses clumped together, spots for giant bombs, especially buildings like expos and wizard towers, which boom, you have these two, which the kill squad is not going to be able to reach because they'll kind of get to this compartment, then they'll be stopped there, nowhere to go. So that's the one heal that he needs, but the second heal is not necessary. He brings the rage instead to, uh, to give those bowlers and the king and the queen some extra damage and get them through the base. So a lot of different strategies probably could have worked, but this was a good one to use because uh, the big kind of controlling kill squad through the, through the base is good to use in a spread out base sometimes where you can still predict where the kill squad's going to go. You know, the compartments are still small enough that you know they're going to go into here, then they're going to go into here for the most part. Um, but at the same time, you can, you can uh, get some good value because the golems aren't going to be just destroyed the second you drop them. There's uh, the, some spread out point defense not too concentrated. And then um, you got some core defenses, you got some core heroes, just a lot of great value in the core. Plus these storages get some good second bounces, um, so that's something that uh, often is overlooked. And then the hogs 
are a perfect pair because you can have um, you have these defenses you want to pick off as you work your way around. Then once they go for that last main push, have the heal spell over the high DPS area where you have the splash damage, the giant bombs, all that kind of stuff. So nice one to Ice Man. Let's take a look at it. Like I said, a nice money baby dragon there uh, coming in for some great value. And then he's just going to drop it first because there's no reason to uh, to start the golem. It doesn't need to tank yet. The baby dragon is just on its own, dealing damage to that one can right there. And then in just a moment, the golems go down. There they are, two golems. And wizards behind, getting a nice deep funnel, has the jump, which will drop in just a moment, as well as his heroes and the CC bowlers, of course. Now, you're going to notice the bowlers do walk around the base here. And the jump spell, you never want to place it directly over. When you have the expo, um, it's pretty common to have the two compartments. Then they kind of come together here where the expo is, then come back out. You guys know what I'm talking about. Very common to see this kind of setup um, on the corner here where it's like almost like a little Pac-Man mouth at the end. Um, you never want to jump directly over there because this building and this building often draw the bowlers away, which is what happens. You want to drop the jump either on this defense or on this defense and come stronger on one side and just funnel one side better. That way, um, th these two defenses draw the bowlers in, for example, and then you know they're going to target this and that won't pull them. And if this does pull them, they have to take the jump to get it because they'll jump over the cannon and come in for it. So oftentimes you want to cheat to one side, make the funnel a little bit better on that one side and come from that side instead of trying to funnel both sides and come right up the middle because these two defenses become such a liability. So if he had just funneled this area a little bit better, he could have dropped the jump on top of that archer tower, let them take out the area defense archer tower and then uh, come in for that expo and then eventually the cannons. So one tip there because the bowlers are going to walk on this one. Not the biggest deal, but they definitely do better inside the base than outside of it. So here comes all the troops. Like I said right there, boom, the uh, that one cannon is going to make them walk. It's a liability if you come in on, uh, at that angle. So the bowlers will get some decent value on the Tesla farm down here. Nice poisons on the CC and the queen has the rage there. The heroes will still get some good value. That one wizard there is a nice touch as well. Um, I think he gets one more Tesla down here, then it's time to start the hogs. Uh, great great uh, the hog deployment starting at the bottom, instead of the top, to get those Teslas um, and start working his way around the base there, get some of that high DPS area out of the way, because it looks like it's going to be a Tesla farm once you see those first two Teslas popping. So here come the hogs, but nice and patient on the heel, doesn't panic and drop it over the farm, knows it's needed. To, uh, to take out the uh, expo compartment with the giant bomb spots and just the better overall shape because you want them to kind of go through a circular area so the heal spell really covers a lot of defenses instead of just kind of like a little line like the Tesla farm was where the heal spell really only covers a few defenses then it uh, can't reach any farther. So there's the heal perfect over the giant bomb expo wizard tower can be a big hog killer but um, Good split, that giant bomb gets kind of pre-triggered by a few hogs, so not all the hogs have to get exposed to it. Then there is that bomb tower, archer tower combo up top, which he really didn't have a whole lot for, but um, there's enough left up at the end. The queen didn't even take the second jump, she shot through the wall, so that means uh, she was kind of sitting back, not taking a whole lot of damage. The king himself is still up, so nice one there to Iceman. Hope you guys liked the video, that's going to do it for attacks today. Um, yeah, just doing my best to keep the uploads coming and um, wish I was able to get some stuff in the last war, but uh, just dropped the ball, I guess, to be completely honest with that one. But um, we got another CWO matchup this weekend, or do we have a buy? I can't remember. We're going to have a buy. I'll let you guys know uh, very soon what the situation is. But I'm going to try to do my best to keep streaming, keep the videos coming, the stuff that helps you guys the most. So that will do it for this video, and let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.